Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to start the second chapter of literature review related to design and control of modular multi-level converter. So till now, till now we have discussed that uh, basically why the renewable energy sources are becoming more common and uh, how HVDC, how basically we can efficiently uh, efficiently transfer the power that is being generated through renewables such as uh, PV panels such as wind turbine uh, from a very remote area to the load centers so uh, we did discuss that either we can transmit power from AC transmission lines uh, and the second option that we have is the DC transmission lines we know that uh, we did discuss that uh, what is the difference between and what are the advantages of uh, uh, transmitting power in high voltage uh, DC rather than high voltage AC. Then we did discuss that basically what is voltage source converter and what is current source converter and why voltage source converters are becoming more common as compared to current source converters. And then uh, moreover we did discuss that uh, basically what is a two level voltage source converter and how it works what are the uh, advantages of two level converter and then we uh, and then moving on we dis did discuss that what are the different multi level converters uh, uh, available uh, in the market that uh, have been used in the past and we did discuss uh, uh, their working and their advantages and their disadvantages and uh, and their comparison and we, we did compare basically the two level conventional converters with multi level uh, converters available and then uh, moving on we did discuss that uh, why modular multi level converter is uh, uh, basically have uh, what are the features of modular multi level converter compared to the other multi level converters um, such as we, we, we discussed that uh, modular multi-level converter is simpler in construction right it's uh, dv by dt stress on the each semiconductor devices is very low because uh, because of uh, the distribution of voltages between uh, uh, different sub modules series connection of different sub modules then we did uh, we, we discussed that uh, what are the other uh, uh, sub module topologies we have such as we uh, firstly discuss that what is half bridge sub module and then moving on uh, we see that uh, if we were using the half bridge sub module and there is a fault at the uh, at the dc transmission lines stiff dc fault is there so we uh, we see that uh, the converter basically loses the lo loses the control loses the current control so in that case we say that okay uh, the half bridge sub module basically is unable to control the control the converter during the stiff dc fault and we say that uh, why because uh, uh, the half bridge sub module uh, topology can only provide uh, uni uni polar volt voltage and uh, we did discuss that it's uh, what is its uh, mo uh, range of modulation index and then moving on we, we compare basically half bit submodule with full bit submodule and we concluded that full bit submodule can operate in any range of modulation index and because of that its uh, uh, energy pulsation is low and due to that capacitor size can be reduced and if the capacitor size is reduced you can basically save a lot of uh, initial investment in in full bit submodule but again there is a trade off because the number of semiconductor devices are engaged in full full bit submodule as compared to half bit submodule so the losses are in, uh, increased in full bit submodule but uh, again uh, we can basically say that it can it can handle the it can handle the fall current uh, it can handle the fall current uh, moreover it can uh, due to uh, operating range of uh, greater than one of modulation index in full bit sub module you can say that uh, basically we are reducing the initial cost of the converter so moving on then we discuss that what is basically the alternate arm converter and uh, we concluded that it can be used <coughs> because it was 
its properties were in between half bridge and full bridge it was better than half bridge but it was not uh, uh, compared to full bridge it was not better so it lies in between uh, basically them <clears throat> and we we also discussed that uh, the modulation index of uh, alternate arm converter is 4 by pi whereas uh, half bridge submodule can operate in between 0 and 1 but for full bridge you can increase the modulation index uh, whatever you want and moreover uh, i forgot to mention one thing here that in 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 full bridge submodule your instantaneous voltage can rise from uh, half of the dc pole to pole voltage available so this is also the uh, a greater advantage and because of that we say that the current capability of the converter will definitely increase if you are increasing the voltage that means current will have to reduce and redu reduction in current means that uh, your converter can handle more uh, current as compared to half bridge submodule so till now we are we, we are done with the uh, we are done with basically conventional converter, we are done with the multi-level converters, we are done with the half bridge, full bridge and alternate arm converters. Now we are, uh, now the second chapter is basically related with the uh, main design of the circuit. So uh, we have to see basically what are the main uh, components of the MMC that we need to decide uh, their size, their quantity according to the uh, <clears throat> according to basically the need of the uh, power that is to be transferred. So in the main circuit design <clears throat> we have to decide that what are the what are the semiconductor switches that we are going to use um, like uh, uh, either we are going to use IGBTs, MOSFETs, thyristors, IGCTs etc. So these are normally the switches available we have to decide the submodules submodule capacitors what are what should be the value of the capacitor because it plays an important role in the you can say in the operation of submodule uh, capacitor uh, converter operation sorry and we have to uh, decide basically that what should be the size of arm inductance we will discuss this thing later and uh, its submodule design we have to discuss we have to discuss what are the uh, redundant submodule how many redundant submodules should be there we will discuss that what is basically redundancy we will discuss that uh, what is auxiliary power supply and how can we uh, decide that and in the end we will see how we can basically start uh, start the operation of a modular multi-level converter how basically we can start it okay so as per the literature review uh, you know there is a there are some properties of the switches like uh, now how can we say that a switch is uh, a switch is a very you know <clears throat> very efficient or very uh, very good in terms of its switching so the good uh, basically we have to see the uh, that either good conduction properties relies on we know that good proper uh, good conduction properties relies on carrier injection with suitable carrier lifetime so axis in low doped n minus n minus region is suitable for conduction mechanism and it it gives rise to the phenomena that is called as reverse recovery characteristics by rec reverse recovery current through diode before turn off and in igbt axis charge in n minus n minus region gives rise to the tail current so both causes the switching losses and we have so it, because of this we have to Minimize basically the carrier lifetime, but again this was this would definitely increase the voltage drop in forward current. So a trade-off is made between the switching properties and the conduction properties. We have to minimize the carrier lifetime uh, uh, because we say that if we are uh, turn if we are turning off the switch, so it has to uh, turn off. But uh, <clears throat> because of the carrier lifetime it remains on for a particular time and this is not desirable so in order to minimize that uh, you know 
reverse recovery uh, we have to decrease the life of the carrier uh, carrier life life of the carrier and if we are decreasing the life of the carrier this will uh, this would certainly increase the voltage drop in forward current so a trade off is there either you can compensate for the carrier lifetime or you can compensate for the sitting losses Now we are going to discuss the reliability of the semiconductor devices. So reliability is expressed basically in failures in time rate, which is uh, which means that how many failures are expected in 10 raised to power 9 hours, or which is uh, approximately equivalent to 1,000 and sorry 11,400 years normally. So this number depends upon the several factors that what is the maximum voltage and current surge, the safe operating area of a switching device, semiconductor device, uh, what is basically the gate uh, driving uh, circuitry, gate driving conditions, either we are using the mechanical heat sink or not and the fourth point is that what what are the mechanical fittings like what are the uh, if we are not means violating the conditions that may cause the failure of the device okay now <clears throat> so the third thing is basically gate driving circuitry this is this is basically the herd this is basically the main thing that is uh, responsible to uh, control the operation of your converter so gate driving circuitry is very important and reliability depends upon that how the gate is driven how your switch is driven now in the literature review it is said that decrease in the gate input voltage basically increases the conduction losses and high switching transients causes undesired overshoots in the voltage and current so whereas low switching devices causes high switching losses since it's a brain of a converter a greater take care in 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 its in choice of gate driver circuitry must be uh, taken off whereas the failure in time rate must be same as of the semiconductor devices uh, then we have auxiliary circuits auxiliary circuits are basically the uh, you can say they are uh, responsible for the converter operation like in order to supply the power to the gate driver circuitry I need basically a small power that can that can that can be supplied to the IC such as we have different types of uh, ICs that can be that are basically used to uh, to that are used to uh, operate the basically switches or sorry, sorry gate driver circuitry that are used to uh, operate the gate driver circuitry such as sig sig signal transmission wires sensors etc etc uh, we know that uh, there are different types of auxiliaries basically that are working behind the uh, operation that are basically responsible to uh, the overall operation of the MMC so these small circuitries are basically called as auxiliary circuitries uh, so we need to also take care of them Then moving on we have to decide basically that what should be the uh, capacitor or what type of capacitors should be should be used. So <clears throat> this is the main main component of the MMC since voltage of the uh, capacitors are inserted and bypassed. Yes, capacitor helps to absorb pulses, uh, absorb charge pulses generated by the arm current each time a sub module is inserted 
very important in determining the initial cost of transmission. Yes, capacitor is very important uh, as discussed earlier. And in the literature, it is it is suggested that the most suitable capacitor technology is basically metallized polypropylene film capacitor, which is what which is self healing and has no catastrophic fault modes this is a typical figure of that capacitor it is 4 millifarad submodule capacitor voltage uh, capacitor with a voltage rating of 2.6 kV kilo volt then uh, moving on we have a arm inductor so normally in modular multi-level converter we are using basically dry type air core uh, inductors uh, why because <coughs> there are many advantages of using dry uh, type air core inductors as compared to oil dipped uh, inductors uh, so there are some advantages of that what are what are those uh, so, the, so the first one is constant inductance even at high level of currents fire hazards are avoided since oil is not there yes fire hazards, hazards uh, are avoided definitely and its weight is lower as compared to uh, oil dipped inductors or reactors it is made up of aluminium so they are basically cheaper they are not made of the copper they are made of aluminium and losses are generally 0.02% of MMC rating according to the literature so you can see this is a typical typical dry type air core reactors or inductors it is basically connected this is what this was this one is connected with the upper arm and the lower one is connected with the lower arm then we have different types of submodule configurations and deciding that which submodule topology is better for the MMC we the researchers had, has basically suggested many types of submodule uh, topologies but before that let us discuss what are the different uh, submodule topologies that are basically currently now uh, used in different projects so in 2010 uh, in order to connect sense in order to supply power from san francisco to california uh, in trans bay cable so this this type of uh, h based topology was used uh, so it is said that the capacitor must be isolated from devices and ground as well as in mechanical point of view so this capacitor must be so these points basically show that these are the capacitor points here capacitor must be connected so this is uh, Simon's realization and then this is the ABB realization this is also a submodule configuration and this is L-Storm realization you see these are the submodules these are connected in series and these are basically the dry type air core inductors so this is just to show show you that these are different submodule topologies that are basically in running in operation in HVDC system okay now we have discussed different types of submodule topology such as half bridge submodule topology full bridge submodule topology and we have discussed what is what are the what are the difference between what is the difference between half bridge and full bridge then <coughs> uh, seeing this uh, the researchers have proposed different uh, type of submodule topology so we are going to discuss these submodule topologies in the next video